Today we are looking at the five most popular and interesting battery plates for the Red Komodo. The RED Komodo is a fantastic camera. In fact, it was one of the most popular and most widely sold cameras last year, the year being 2021. And in 2022, there is no shortage of accessories for this camera. All of the battery plates we're looking at today do attach directly to the back of the body and are not dedicated towards rails. You can get other battery plates that are rails and then adapt them for a particular camera. So we're not looking at any of that stuff. We're looking at camera Komodo specific battery plates. All of these battery plates work with what we would call a brick battery, which looks something like this or like this. This is a micro battery and this is a standard battery. And these come in two mounts, which this one is a V mount battery, but there's also an A mount or gold mount battery. And all of the plates we're looking at today work with both V mount and gold mount batteries. So whatever battery system you are using, all of these plates will work for you. Without further ado, let us start with our first battery plate, which is the Tilta Dual Canon BP Adapter battery plate rolls right off of the tongue. Looks just like this. As mentioned before, with all of these plates, this is the V mount, but it also comes in a gold mount or A mount configuration as well. This connects to the camera via a dual battery plate configuration, as the name implies, and powers the camera via these gold contacts right here on the bottom. So as far as the camera is concerned, there are two batteries plugged in, and that is how it is getting its power. It has an indicator light, which you can see right here. It's of course not powered on right now, uh, but the second that you put a battery into the plate, that indicator light will be on. Uh, this indicator light doesn't give you any power information. It doesn't tell you how much battery you have left or anything like that. It's just going to let you know that there is power to the plate from the battery and it is always going to be on. There is no power switch or power button on this, which means that the second that you put a battery into the plate here, uh, it is immediately going to be pushing power to all of the ports and to the camera itself. This plate doesn't rotate, which means that it is always going to be in a horizontal configuration when on the back of the camera. Not the end of the world, it's more streamlined that way, uh, but just something to know, no rotation. What's interesting about this one though is that even though it is using the battery contacts, this does not transfer battery information to the camera itself. So even though it looks like they're batteries and the camera reads them as batteries, you're not going to know how much power is left on your battery on the camera menu itself. Now, most of your batteries, the micro ones like this, would have some sort of readout here where you can see, there you go, how much power is left in that battery. Uh, your big boys here uh, would have a screen like this, which of course will give you percentages and time readouts and a bunch of other stuff. But the camera isn't going to know how much battery power is left, so that's something that you're going to need to be mindful of. The tilt -a plate has five power ports on it, meaning that you can power up to five devices depending on what type of power they take. Uh, first, we have two DTAP ports. DTAP and PTAP are the same thing, depending on where you are in the world. In America, we call them DTAP ports, but if you see PTAP, it means the same thing as DTAP. One here is on the top, which you can see right there, and the other is on the side here, which is right next to the indicator light. In addition to that, we have two two-pin Limo ports, and we have two of those on top. I don't like the fact that they're on top because your DTAP ports are right angle brackets, but your Limo ports, generally speaking, are going to be straight. You can get them in uh, rotating right angles. Those get a little bit more expensive and tricky. I wish these were on the side, but they're on the top, so they kind of stick out like wild hairs, uh, which I have a couple of right now. But those are on the top there, so that's four. And then on the side here, we have a 5 volt USB A uh, port here. Now, technically, you can hot swap batteries with this plate, but it's uh, not quite what you think. You would plug your camera in via the DC in on the back of the camera to a wall so it has main power running into the camera, and then you can disconnect the battery here without losing power to the camera. That said, of course, you are going to lose power to all of your accessories, so make sure that you power those down before you unplug the battery from the plate, uh, because those are going to lose power. But you're not going to lose power to the camera as long as the camera's plugged into the wall. So is it hot swappable? I, I guess yes, uh, but with a lot of caveats. 
The build of this is metal on the front, so this plate here and this top plate kind of here is all metal, and then these battery connectors here on the back are made out of plastic. So it is a combination of metal and plastic, but the build quality feels really, really good. When it comes to the fit or how this fits onto the camera, bring this here, put on this here, and we will go ahead and put a battery in here. It fits really nicely, by the way. You can see that the uh, power indicator light is on now, uh, but it fits really snug. So if I sit here and play with it, let's see if we can hear it. It's on there nice and tight. It's really snug, there's no play. I'm not worried about this thing popping off or falling off. And I like the ergonomics of how streamlined this is. Uh, again, I wish that the limo pins were on the side as opposed to on the top, but uh, that's you know a different problem for a different day. But in order to see how this really works, let's go ahead and put the accessories onto this. Let's rig it out so that way you can kind of see a basic workflow of how this would look. So, Okay, let's walk through this rig here. This is about the smallest or lightest I would rig out a Komodo with the uh, monitor and the wireless follow focus here. In the front here, we have the motor for the Nucleus Nano, which is a wireless follow focus system, and we are plugged into this DTAP port here on the top. Up here, I have a monitor. So here is the two pin limo and that then plugs into the top. And you can see here, this is kind of why I don't really like it being on top because I then have this kind of cable that's running off of the side. So that then powers the camera from the battery, the motor from the plate and the monitor from the plate, all using different types of connectors. This comes in at $139 American. Now I will say a point of concern for me in this uh, is that I was on a trip in Baltimore, I was doing some work and I was using one DTAP, one Limo and the USB five volt port uh, here. This was powering my audio receiver, which was the Rode Wireless uh, Go. And then I had a monitor and a wireless transmitter also plugged in. After about 30 minutes, this plate got so hot on the back of the camera that it actually burned my fingers when I went to touch it. And in addition to that, we were getting weird feedback coming out of the USB port, so much so that it actually was creating a feedback buzz in my audio. So it ruined the audio. Fortunately, of course, I was recording a backup, always redundant record your audio. Uh, but with something as expensive as the Red Komodo, especially when you're talking about putting on a monitor, a wireless follow focus, wireless video system, you know, you're talking about a very expensive piece of equipment. And this made me feel like it was very unstable or unsafe to use. And the last thing I wanna do is fry out all of my gear. I've used this plate many times and I only have run into that issue when using the USB port. In addition to these other ports, I can use all four of these never have a problem. It gets warm, but not hot. I don't notice any feedback, but there's something about using the USB in conjunction with these other ports that makes it really, really scary, uh, at least for me. I don't know if that's the particular unit that I have or if that's something that other people have experienced, um, but that's enough that made me put this kind of on the shelf just because, you know, I'm not trying to fry out my camera and all of my accessories. The next plate we are looking at is the Anton Bauer battery bracket, which looks like this. Now, this is the simplest of the plates that we are looking at today. And on the back, like the Tilta plate, this uses the dual battery bracket connection. Uh, but unlike the Tilta, you'll see here that there are no gold contacts on the bottom, meaning that this does not power the camera through this battery bracket, which is why it has this little cable down here. This cable plugs into the DC in on the back of the Komodo, because of course this is plugged into our DC in on the camera. This is not not a hot swappable plate. So that means that you need to power everything down before you go ahead and change out your batteries. Like with the Tilta, no battery communication is moved from the battery through the plate to the camera. So the camera has no idea how much battery power is left. Not the end of the world, but just something to be mindful of and make sure that you just continue to check your little indicator lights so that way you know how much battery power you have left. There is no indicator light. There is no power switch or button on this. This is just exactly what it looks like. Again, super, super simple. That said, this has these four Four little hex screws right here and you can actually mount this on its side so you can change the configuration of how you have your batteries mounted onto this uh, but there's a 
big caveat, which goes to our next point, which is the ports that we have on this. For this, we have two ports only, and they are the same. We have a DTAP port on the left, and we have a DTAP port on the right. So there are two DTAPs, that's it. No Limo, no USB, A or C, or anything else. Just two ports. The reason, by the way, I talk about this rotating plate is because if you rotate the plate into its horizontal configuration, that means that this DTAP port, instead of being on the side, is then on the bottom. And the problem with that is, is that if you're using your SDI port or your extension port or any of the other ports on the back of the Komodo, you can't plug anything in to this DTAP because it's on the bottom where all of our other cables are. So even though this does technically rotate, um, to me, it's not rotatable if you need to plug in any accessories. If you just need this to power your camera off of a much, much bigger battery, totally fine. You could totally get away with that. That's totally okay. But if you're trying to plug anything in, and since we only have two ports on this, eliminating half of the ports by having it on its side, to me, is a deal breaker. Build quality, opposite of the Tilta. Our plate here is made out of plastic and our connector here is made out of metal. So it is a metal and a plastic build, uh, just the inverse of the Tilta. Now let's talk about how this fits onto the Komodo. So I traded out the cable for this to a Limo to DTAP because of course this only has two DTAPs, but you do wanna plug this in first before you then connect this because again, with this SDI and this extension cable here, uh, we're running into a little bit of tight space here. So I'm gonna plug this in like that and then I'm going to mount this on here like that. Now, I have my DTAPs here on either side. This guy goes here, and this guy goes here. Perfect, just like that. So now, we have this all connected here, and if I go and I try to play with this, let's see if we can hear it, ready? Minimal play. Again, really nice, really tight, really secure. It's not gonna wobble on you while you're moving. If you really wanted to make sound, you could push against the back and get a little bit of movement, uh, a little more than you would have on the Tilta, but nothing that is uh, scary or something that you should be concerned about. So it is nice and fit and snug. But you can see here on the back, I'll show you in this camera here, uh, this is my extension cord here, this is the SDI plug here, and then this is the uh, power plug right here. This is why it's not hot swappable. So if you just need a really sturdy, really simple battery plate, um, this one works. This one comes in at a grand total of $215, so it's a little bit more than the Tilta, but not a ton more than the Tilta. Moving on. The next plate we are looking at is the OG battery plate, the very first one that came out for this thing, and it is from Wooden Camera, and it is the Wooden Camera Battery Slide Pro. This is the most different looking one that we'll look at today, uh, but it's also a really, really interesting one. So this is the only plate of the plates that we're looking at today that is a full-size V-mount plate. The rest of them are all micro plates, meaning that they all specialize in micro batteries. This is a full size plate, which means that you can use micro batteries on it, uh, but it specializes in the Big Mac Daddy Boys. Uh, so this you could use on all traditional plates without it seeming oversized or cumbersome. Now, you could use big boys on the little plates and you can use little boys on the big plates, uh, but this is intended for big boys. Uh, the other couple things that are interesting about this one is this is the only one of the ones we're looking at today that uses a single battery bracket here. The rest of them are all the dual battery brackets, which we've been looking at, but there's a good reason why it is only using one. We'll get into that in just a second. This one, like the Anton Bauer one, connects via that same uh, two pin DC in power cord on the back of the Komodo, which again means that the battery information is not getting transferred into the camera. So mind your power. And again, with these big boys here, it's gonna give you an accurate readout of based on the amount of power that's being consumed, how much runtime you have left, in addition to the percentage of the battery left. So this makes it a lot easier to monitor how much power you're using and how much time you have left between swapping things out. 
but the camera isn't natively going to see your battery power. Now this does not have an indicator light for power on it, but you will see that there's this little light here right on the side. And that light is for a fuse that's built into this plate, which means that if you overload the plate or you, you require too much power, you're running too much power off of your particular battery, it will trip a fuse, which will turn off your 3D taps on this plate while still maintaining power to the camera, which is a great fail safe. So then that way, if your accessories power off, you're not then losing power to the camera. You're not going to then lose a take. It's not going to then short out. That's a really, really nice thing. And next to this light, of course, is then a reset button, which you can press. Uh, and it, of course, will reset that fuse. It's the only one of the place that we're looking at today that have a built-in fuse like that, and it is a sweet feature to have. Now, this is truly hot swappable, and there are two ways that we actually can do this with this camera. The first is there is a new DC in plug here. Mind you, we're taking up the DC plug on the back of the Komodo, but it has given us a female port here, which means that I can then plug my AC power plug for the camera directly into the plate. And then it is going to power my accessories and the camera at the same time, which means that I could then hot swap my battery on the back and not lose power to anything uh, when it is plugged into the wall, which is awesome. So that is a true hot swap feature built in. Now, it also does take a redundant battery, which does give you a second option for hot swapping. You'll see here that this is the only one that has kind of this bracket on the back. And as we mentioned before, it is a single battery bracket, which means that your other battery bracket is left open. Now you can get this in a variety of different lengths here on the top. And the reason for that is it allows for different sized batteries. This is the middle sized uh, BP battery that you can get for it. There's one that's larger and also one that is smaller than this. And the bracket that comes with this particular plate uh, natively is the smaller bracket. So if you have a smaller battery than this, it would automatically work. I got the extension off of the back to work with this, but you'll see here that it is actually the perfect distance to use a second battery onto the camera uh, next to this uh, plate here. The benefit of that, of course, is that this is seen as a battery to the camera. So if this stops powering it by trading out a battery, the camera will automatically switch over to this battery and you won't lose any power. So you can actually hot swap this way as well. The only difference here is, of course, this isn't going to be sending power out to your D-taps, so you would lose power to your accessories, but not to the camera itself. Like the Tilta, this is not a rotating plate. This plate sticks in the vertical configuration only, so there is no horizontal battery configuration for it. Now let's talk ports. This has three ports, so one more than the last we looked at, and they are all D-taps. So we have two D-tap ports here on the side, and we have one D-tap port here on top. The other thing that's interesting to note is that, of course, it has this little crank here, which allows us to change the configuration and the angle of this plate in relationship to the camera. So depending on how we have the camera built out, we can then adjust how the plate works in relationship to that to make it work with all of the different cables and other things we might have coming off the back of the camera. No Limo, no USB-A or C on this. This is a DTAP only plate, not the end of the world. Three of them obviously is better than two of them. And again, without having any rotation, uh, we can use all three all the time. In terms of build quality, this one is the only one that's built entirely out of metal. So this has the most high-end build quality of all of the products that we're looking at today and can definitely take the most beating in a film set environment. But we need to look at the fit and how this fits into the camera. So this is then, of course, how we would configure this particular plate onto the camera. You can see here, if I adjust this, I can then, of course, move this, change the angle, kick it out however far I want um, into this system, which is cool because, again, you see this big gap we've got right here. Uh, if I take one of my batteries, I can move this guy out of the way, move one of my batteries in, and lock it in. So now I have my redundant battery to the main battery. And then on this side, which I think you can see, can you see that? There you go. I still have this DC plug right here. So then if I plug this into main, I would then be able to power all of my stuff off of DTAP. So this then is my wireless follow focus. This is the monitor. And then I still have an open port on the side should I wanna use a wireless video transmission system. So let's talk about the fit if we listen. 
little bit of movement. I would say less movement here than on the Anton Bauer plate, uh, probably equal to the Tilta plate, but because this is entirely made out of metal, uh, the build quality is better than what we've seen on the either of uh, the other two, meaning that it is going to hold up in an onset environment. Now, this is more expensive. This one is 449 American, but this, as you can see, because it takes the big battery, has a redundant battery backup and takes the DC in, allows this to be used more in a full uh, set environment. So if you're doing a lot of production, higher end stuff, where you might be using this as a B cam, C cam situation to other cameras, this plate might make the most sense because it works much more seamlessly in a larger ecosystem of the film world that you might already have. So uh, this guy, really sweet. It's a really nice, really professional bracket, something that would work brilliantly in a large film set environment. Next. This is the Core SWX battery plate. This, of course, V-mount, gold mount, doesn't matter. And this, like the Tilta and the Anton Bauer plate, connects via this dual battery plate bracket here. So it will use both of the battery plates on the back. But you'll notice this, which is a little bit different than the other one because we have kind of an electronic component here that connects to one of the two battery sides. And that is because this is the only plate of the plates that we're looking at today that does in fact communicate battery power. Don't know how they did it, some sort of black magic sorcery, it's great, uh, but it will register as one battery because of course it's not showing the tool slots. So on the Komodo, it will show the one of two batteries plugged in and it will register the battery power on camera. Now this does have an indicator light, which you can see kind of right here underneath their logo, uh, and that is always on. So the second that you have a battery connected to the plate, uh, that light will be on for the duration of that battery having power. No power button or switch on this, so again, the second you connect the battery, everything is gonna have power running to it and through it. With this plate, because it does power the camera via these contacts right here as a battery, it does leave the DC port in open on the camera, meaning that you can plug your camera into the wall and hot swap your battery out without losing any power to the camera. You will lose power to all of your accessories, so make sure you power those accessories down before you trade out your batteries. There's no accessory fuse on this one and uh, the plate does not rotate, but of course you do get battery readout in the camera, so it's kind of a trade-off that you get there. Now this has three ports on it and there are three different ports. So on this side here, you'll see that we have a D-tap off of the right side on the left. We have a USB type A port and on the back, is where they've placed the Limo. I talked on the Tilta about how I didn't like it sticking out the top of the plate. Having it off of the back makes a whole lot of sense because if you have your SDI plugged in and you have your extension cable plugged in and you've got a DC power plug plugged in and then you have this plugged in, they're all coming off in the same direction. So you won't have a problem in terms of your ergonomics by having your Limo off of the back. So I do really, really like the placement of that. I don't know if I would like a USB as much as I would like to have two D taps in the same way that you do on the Anton Bauer plate. But depending on the accessories that you're using will you know, depend on whether or not you find that useful. But you've got one of each, USB-A, D tap, Limo. This is also metal and plastic. This plastic here on the plate and the rest of this build is uh, metal. So really, really nice construction there. Where this really has an issue is how it fits. And by that, I don't necessarily just mean the way that it fits. It's really slim. It fits really nicely against the body here. It does look like it all belongs. And you kind of see the, the power light there, the power indicator there. There's a couple things. One, on the back here, uh, if I have a right angle SDI cable here, uh, it has to then tuck under our Limo port. And while that normally isn't an issue, uh, if I want to set the camera down, uh, it then is putting stress on that SDI. So that's kind of a bummer. Again, you could get a straight SDI here instead of the right angle, wouldn't be a problem. I'm a big fan of right angles because of course it kind of keeps everything nice and tight. What I'm really talking about though, when it comes to the fit, listen to this. The plate is actually kind of loose on the back here. And if you read any of the reviews online, you can actually see that this is a very common problem. Some of the people even talk about losing power because of how loose this fits 
to where you actually could lose power to the camera because the contacts aren't that secure onto it. So this plate comes in at 199. So it's a little bit more than the Tilta. It's pretty on par with the Anton Bauer, less than the wooden camera. Of all of the plates that we're looking at today, while this is a very beautiful plate and has a lot of things that I really like about it, uh, while the Tilta is unreliable because of that weird USB port, this I would put in the category of being somewhat unreliable because of this fit here. And that takes us to our final battery plate. The final plate that we are talking about today is the newest plate of the five. That is the Bebop Coco Moto plate. Now this was announced at the end of 2021 and is just now getting into shipping now. So I believe it is currently available. If not, it is uh, soon to be. Uh, this is awesome. Again, comes in gold mount, V mount, doesn't matter. The configuration is entirely yours. It connects to the camera via our dual battery brackets here. But again, as you can see, no communication between these and the camera, which means that again, no battery levels to the camera from the battery, which is fine. I think only the one of the five that we looked at had that. So just be mindful of your power, which means that it does power via the DC import, which is this little cable plugs right into the back of the camera like that. That said, this is the second of the five, the first being the wooden camera one, that does have a true hot swap capability. What we have taken up here on the back of the camera, they have given us on the side of the plate here with this DC in uh, right here. So that means that I can then take my DC plug, plug this in here, take the other end, plug it into the wall or a generator or some other AC power. And then I can then truly hot swap the battery off of this plate while maintaining power to my camera and all of the accessories. Again, only two of the plates we've looked at allow for that. And that is the wooden camera plate and now the Bebop plate. Such a great and necessary feature. The other thing that I think is really awesome about this one is this is the only one of the five plates that has a power button. Listen, it's got a power toggle right here. And then underneath that, it has an indicator light. Now there is no accessory fuse that's only on the uh, wooden camera model, but that's totally fine. And this doesn't rotate. This is just in the one configuration. Getting into the ports on this one, this is the most interesting of them. On the top here, it has this really odd looking DTAP port and they call this a swappable DTAP port. And what I mean by that is DTAPs only have the two plugs, not the three. And you'll see that it's got this funny shape. So if I take a DTAP cable, I actually have the option of plugging it in either way. So if I wanna plug it in here, I can take it onto the right two pins and plug it in this configuration, or I can go the other way with the left two pins and have it go in the other configuration. So I can change the direction of how this connects, which is so helpful in terms of cable management because I can then configure this and have a tail or my cable going out in either direction. I don't know why everybody doesn't do this. This to me makes a ton of sense and seems like a genius thing. I think all DTAP ports should be this thing so then we can adjust them as we need to. It's brilliant. But that's not the only port that we have. So that is the only DTAP port that we have. But going back to this side over here, we have two Limo ports. These are off of the side, right? We talked about the DC in here. These are off of the side. Putting them on the side makes a ton of sense because this is where all of my cables are naturally going to be anyways coming off of the side of the camera. On the other side here, we have the USB-A, which is underneath this power plug here. Uh, that's great for standard accessories. And then on the bottom here, the very bottom, we have this USB type C. This is cool to have a USB type C. More and more accessories are using USB type C uh, connections for it. But again, the placement of this isn't my favorite only because it is off of the bottom. So like in the same way with the Anton Bauer plate, having things coming off of the bottom gets tough because of course we have other cables and things that are coming off of it because I don't want things conflicting with other cables. But that is the five ports out and the one port in that this thing does offer which is awesome. But let's take a look at how it fits onto a rig. So here we have it all configured in and fit to it. And you can see here, I've got the power toggle here on the side. I have my swappable D-tap here on top. In this case, of course, I have it on the same side that I'm running the cable for the motor. On the other side, I have my two pin limo going through my little sprig configuration and powering this guy. See how coming off of the side makes a lot more sense because it actually is kind of in the same depth as the side of my battery here. So there's nothing all that 
protruding off of any of the sides. And then of course I've got my ejection here, my other port out and in. And then on the bottom, this is the one that I was talking about a little earlier. That's where the USB type C port is. Uh, you can see that my 12G SDI cable here is kind of in the way of that. So I couldn't necessarily plug something into that right now. Um, but depending on the cables that you're using and the configuration that you have, that might be something you can use. Would I like to have had it on the side? Of course, uh, but again, not the end of the world. So let's look at the fit, ready? Listen. Okay, I'm moving the table. Uh, this actually has the tightest fit of all five that we are looking at. It is the most snug and the most secure of all of the plates that we're looking at. Between that and the build quality and the port configuration, the ergonomics and everything else, uh, this is going to give me the performance that I want out of a plate in a flush mount. Uh, so then I'm able to go out into the field and confidently use this camera and use this plate with the power, knowing that I'm not gonna have anything jostle or move uh, or fail on me. This has been one of the most robust plates that I have used and I have never had an issue even when I'm using literally all five of the ports. But that comes at a price. This is the most expensive plate that we're looking at today. This one is $585 American. So the cheapest one being 130, this one being the most expensive, that's a big gap to fill. That said, I trust this. I like the features that this has. Uh, the drawbacks of it mainly are just that USB type C on the bottom and that's not that big of a deal to me. So with all that said, let's compare these five on the winners and the losers and what makes the most sense. Okay, let's now compare these five. Let's start with the good. The best in terms of reliability are going to be these two here, your Bebop and the wooden camera. And that of course is reflected in the price. I've never had an issue with either of these. They always work perfectly and reliably. The biggest difference between these two is I would say this one works best in a full set environment. If you're working with this camera in conjunction with other cameras in a larger production, having a full size battery plate, having the fuse for that, and then having a full hot swap capability makes this something that works for that. If you are a solo operator, and or indie shooter, the Bebop, in my opinion, is going to be the best. It gives you that same full hot swap capability, but it being flush mount is going to be something that is a huge thing. And the advantage that this one has over this one, even though this has that great fuse, uh, this one has the power switch, which I cannot overstate how great that is to have as a feature. Then the least reliable are going to be these two, the Tilta and the Core SWX. The Tilta, my own personal experience, of course, is the USB port freaked out when I was using it with other ports and of course burnt me and then ruined my audio. And then while I personally haven't had an issue with the Core SWX plate, uh, there are a great number of shooters that have, including some who again have stated that they've lost power to their camera during shoots and takes and ruined their footage because this is so insecurely mounted onto the back of the camera. And then this guy is kind of right in the middle. It is reliable, it works, it's simple, it's effective, but again, you only have two ports. One, if it's on its side. So while it is a reliable piece and you're not gonna have any issues in terms of the engineering or losing power, that kind of thing, it's feature set to me, kind of puts it in the middle of these three here. Now that's reliability. Let's talk about the variety of ports. In terms of what you get for port configuration, your two winners are these, which is my favorite and my least favorite. And they both have five five slightly different ones. This has two D-taps, one USB-A and two Lemos. This has one D-tap, it is that swappable one. One USB-A, one USB-C and two Lemos. Uh, the ergonomics of this one again ekes it out over this one because these guys are on the top and they're on the side over here, uh, but not the end of the world for that. In the middle of the pack, we have these two, which both have three ports. This has three D-taps. This has three separate ports. This is D-tap, Lemo, and USB-A. And then in last place in terms of ports is our Anton Bauer because again, two, unless it's on its side, and then one D-tap. And finally, just to go over prices again, this is the cheapest at 140. This is the second cheapest at 199. Third at 215, fourth at 449, and most expensive at 585. 
If you have personal experience using any of these battery plates uh, or ones that we haven't yet talked about, uh, go ahead and comment them down below. I'm curious, especially for folks who've used the Core or the Tilta, am I alone in those experiences or those things that you have also uh, experienced? I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, do me two favors. One, give this video a like, pass it around, share it with your friends, and two, Go ahead and hit subscribe to see more stuff like this and that bell icon uh, so that way you know when more videos like this come up. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.